Welcome back, scientists. Today, we are talking about the Central Plains grassland. I am Mr. Steyer, and I will be taking you through this lesson where you are going to be able to say that you can contrast the amount of rain that falls in grasslands with the amount that fall in deserts and forests, and you can identify some of the organisms that live in a grassland prairie. First things first, we have to talk about what are the things that we know about grasslands. And the first question we have to ask ourselves is, where are the grasslands? And the grasslands are right here where we live in the middle or the central part of the United States. And do we recall how much rainfall grasslands receive each year? Grasslands receive about 50 to 100 centimeters, which is about 29 to 49 inches of rainfall each year. So by contrast, we remember that in the Northwest Pacific Forest, we were finding they were getting over 100 inches of rain a year. And in the desert, they may only be getting 12 inches of rain. So this Central Plains grassland is going to fall right in the middle when it comes to, is it as dry as a desert? No. Is it as wet as the Pacific Northwest Forest? No. So what do you think a grassland is? Yeah, it's exactly that. A grassland is a grassland. A grassland is a large area of land covered with grasses and many types of wildflowers. So if we look at our image here, we can see that it is a large expanse of land that is covered with grasses, small little plants. Prairie grasses have adaptations that help them survive the long, hot summers. So are grasses the only plants that are going to grow in a grassland? Well, no. You're going to find wildflowers. We can see an image of that here on the right. We can see some trees. We see some trees off in the distance. It is it's possible and maybe likely that these trees are along a river that goes through a, a grassland. So that would make this a riparian forest. So as we go forward and we explore and investigate this lesson today, we are going to focus on finding out how some plants and animals are able to survive with the amount of rain that falls in the grasslands of the Central Plains. The central portion of the United States receives more rain than the desert, but less than the forest. The region supports grasslands also called prairies. This large area of land is covered in grasses and many kinds of wildflowers, but few trees. The climate in the grasslands varies with each season. Winters are cold and, and summers are hot and dry. Prairie plants grow long roots that can absorb and store water. During extremely dry periods, fires are common. Many prairie plants regrow after a fire because their roots are protected below the ground. So even though we may see that these areas experience fire, the fire actually can help the plants regrow because their roots are protected deep below the ground. Now, we know that was not necessarily the same situation in our desert. In our desert, most of the roots were growing near the surface where they could get the water quickly. Here, they need to grow deep into the ground so that they can reach the water and they can have a more sustainable life. So, the question we're asking ourselves is, how does the amount of rainfall in a grassland compare with the amount of rainfall in a desert and a forest in the northwestern United States? 
We've already talked about this. The central grasslands get more rain than deserts, but less than the forests. So we need to explain how the amount of rain that falls in grasslands is related to the types of plants that grow there. Many trees require more water to grow than plants in a grassland. So the amount of rain that falls in a grassland does not support the growth of many trees. Again, as we notice in our image here, it is very likely that these trees, in order for them to survive and grow, they're growing along a river, which makes them a riparian forest. And they're getting the water they need, not from the rainfall, but from the river and the water running into the river which is why they're not dotted or they're not covering the landscape. Summer and winter weather in the grasslands means the winters are cold and the summers are hot and dry. So we can see we're going to have some animals that can survive easily in this environment. How are bison able to survive the warm weather? Well, a bison adapt to changing seasons by shedding their thick coat, their thick winter coat when the weather becomes warm. So this woolly fur that's on them, they shed that off. They'll rub that off on a, on a buffalo rock or on a tree, or they'll rub it off as they're running through the brush, through the tall grasses even. And then they'll shed that thicker fur so that they can stay cooler in that hot, dry summer. Well, think about what you know about birds. How might a prairie chicken survive the cold winters of a grassland? Well, we have this prairie chicken right here that's feeding on the grasses growing in a Nebraska prairie. Well, if this prairie chicken is trying to survive the cold winters, we can infer that they're going to use their feathers to keep warm. We're going to note that some birds may fly to a warmer places during these cold winters. Or we might see that this prairie chicken uses a burrow in order to stay warm and drier in that cold winter season. Looking at the other plants that we can note, and again, we're asking ourselves, how do these things survive? How would a tree survive? And why are there so few of them on a grassland? Well, there's so few trees on a few tree species grow here because there is not enough rainfall and fires destroy the saplings. What function do the colorful flowers or wildflowers serve? These colorful flowers attract bees and wasps that help the plant reproduce. So in order for that plant's pollen to get carried on and for it to reproduce, it needs to attract bees and wasps to it so that pollen can be transported and that plant can live on. So how do most of these prairie plants survive with little or no rainfall? They have long roots that can take in and store water. There's long, deep roots that go into the ground to help them hold and store the water. And what effects do the fires have on the grasslands? Well, fires destroy plants and parts of the plants that grow above the ground, but not the plant's roots. After a fire, many plants are able to grow again. As you continue to work through this lesson and learn more about the Central Plains grassland, you will understand how unique of an environment it is. A couple of the things you're gonna be asked to do when you go forward is you're going to be asked to make an inference. And when do you think grasslands get most of their rainfall? So when do you think a grassland is going to get most of the rainfall? Do you think it's going to be during the spring, the fall, the cold, dry winters, or the warm, dry summers? Like when do you think 
most of that rainfall is going to come for these prairie grasses. You're going to need to be ready to summarize what is one way in which prairie plants survive the extreme changes in weather. And you're going to need to be able to describe what is the weather like in the prairie during the summer? What is that weather like and how might that weather affect the plants and the animals that can survive and live there? Again, your goal today is that you can contrast the amount of rain that falls in the grassland with the amounts that fall in deserts and forests. And you can identify some of the organisms that live in a grassland or a prairie. Thanks for being with me here today, scientists. Be a critical thinker. Ask hard questions. Think deeply about the work that you are doing. I am Mr. Steyer, and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.